Hi, welcome back to P3. Today we're looking at Unit 2.6 Combining Transformations. Now, this is kind of essentially part of a GCSE topic. Uh, transformations, same kind of thing. Graphs tend to be a little bit harder in this one. Um, and some of the transformations can be a little bit more challenging when they're combined. So I've just put them on here. So you can see we've got our translations, so that's how just our moving horizontally or vertically. Um, and then our stretches, which again is horizontal stretch or vertical stretch. Easiest way when you're looking at these is if it's inside the bracket, it is horizontal, dealing with the x values. If it's outside the bracket, then it is vertical, okay, dealing with the y values. Now, additionally, there are a couple that are kind of special cases of the stretch. So if I had, for example, um, f of minus x, now, this is essentially when a is negative 1 up here, so when a is negative 1. And this will give you the same as a reflection in the y-axis. Okay, because what it is, is just taking the positive x, -axis, x values and what's happening to them is the same as the y values and vice versa and again if I take the negative outside it's the same as when this stretch a is minus one and this one results in a reflection so reflect in the x axis um, but they're kind of special cases and you can work them out as you uh, go through a question you don't have to learn them as they are but it might make your life a little bit easier if you do. Now let's look at a question um, where we'll do each of these. Okay, let's have a little look. So we'll start with the first one. Y equals F of X plus two. It's inside the bracket, so if X my X, it's adding, adding or subtracting will be the same. So it's a translation. Now when it's affecting the X, I'm always doing the opposite. That's the easiest way to think about it. So x plus 2 actually means I'm going to move two places to my left. So I'm going in the negative direction. So my graph would look something like this. So what that means is that this value here for a is now at minus 5. 2, so my value of a, so we could do it here, is now at minus 5, 2, and my value of b is at minus 1, minus 3. Okay, and that's what's happening there. Now let's have a look at b. So f of x plus 3, it's outside of my f of x. So it's affecting the y's, the vertical. It's an additional subtraction. So we're looking at a translation. So it's plus 3, and you go in the right direction, the direction you'd expect. So we are moving up 3. OK. So this one now hitting that line there. So at B, You can see we still want to cross, but now we're hitting at zero. And A, pop that there. We've still at minus three, but we're up to five now. We just added three to each of my Y values. Let's look at part C. So C is inside. So we're inside, so we're affecting the horizontal, the X. This is multiplied, so multiplied or divided. 
okay and you always do the opposite so 2x is 2 times x so I'm actually going to divide my x values by 2 so what that means is it's a stretch but it's more like a compression so you know this graph is just getting smaller so my value of a and my value of b so my value of a now is half the size for x so 3 over 2 but the y remains unchanged and my b again half the size of x but my y is remaining unchanged okay and that's what's happening there it's always the the opposite and if I had, you know, y equals f of a half x, then I would actually multiply my x values by 2. Uh, let's have a look at d. So we've got here, we've got the 4 outside. So it's outside of f of x means it affects the y. It's multiplied by 4, and we do exactly what we expect for y. So this time we're going to be stretching this so we're going to go right up I'm not going to be able to actually draw it as high as I probably should on here and I've got something like that and then looking at my A and B values my A, the X will stay the same the Y will be multiplied by 4 and again with B, the X will stay the same, but the Y will be multiplied by 4. Okay, and that's kind of it in a nutshell. What I'll do now is I'll have a look at the same graph, but when we combine in more than one of these transformations at a time. So let's have a look at this one. So we've got inside and outside. Um, so I'm going to do inside first. You kind of approach these very much like you would with rules of bit mass. Okay, so let's go inside affects the x. It's going to move 2 to the right. And then outside is affecting the y. It's stretching it by 3. So if I look at this one, the a is going to move 2 to the right. Can be negative one and then if i look at the b it's going to be moved two to the right so that's going to be at three concentrate on the y's that's three lots so a stretch of three so this is going to be six and this one is going to be negative nine okay in this kind of case um because the inside affects the x and it doesn't actually affect the y if I'd actually done the stretch first and then the translation, it wouldn't have made a difference to my answer. However, in some cases, on some of these combinations, if you do them in the wrong order, you will end up with the wrong answer. So here's an example where that's the case. So we've got y equals 5f of x plus 3. So think how you would do it with Bidmus. You need to do the multiplication before an addition and that's what we're doing here we're going to apply the stretch and then the translation okay so if i think about what's happening here the stretch would mean that my x values are staying the same but my y values are being multiplied by five so here we've got something like this again going on okay just so I can squeeze it in but this will be 1 minus 15 and this one up here will be I've kind of draw an arrow to it oh. actually let's see if I can there we are that's a bit better this one would be minus 3 10 and then once I've done that, I then need to do the uh, the vertical translation. So it's a plus 3, so then we need to move it up 3. So what's happening here now is that 
you know this value is now being moved up three so you know we've got something like that now my value of a is well minus 3 13 and then my value of b here is 1 minus 12 and those are my values so I'm applying that vertical stretch first then that vertical translation now I'm going to give you a few to try um, and I'll try and throw in a couple of hard ones and then I'll go through them at the end I just stated the last answer. So this one I will be very similar, but I will run through it so at least just one set. So we're looking at A, we want to move it two to the right and a stretch in the y direction of three. So that's going to become 18. And coordinate B, moving two to the right, so the x value becomes four. Vertical stretch of three, three times one is three. Looking at B, it's a horizontal stretch. It's a half x, half times x, the same as actually multiplying by two because you're dividing by a half, is what you need to do here. So what's happening to my A is multiplying by two, so it's minus six. And then I'm looking at a half of y, so that's three. So remember, inside the brackets affects the x, the horizontal, and do the opposite. Outside the bracket affects the y, do it as you expect. So instead of a half of 2, it's multiply 2 by 2. Um, but it's going to be a half of the 1, half of the y. C. So we're going to have a modulus graph, modulus for the x. So you'll see the same on both sides of the axes of the y-axis. So in this case, my, y, my a would have been minus 2, 1, just applying the modulus to x. And then I'm going to do that stretch. So my a is going to be minus 2, and then I'm stretching the y by a factor of 2. And b will stay as it is and I'm for the x. And I'm stretching the y by a factor of 2. <clears throat> so quite a few things happening here. We've got what's happening inside the x and everything happening outside. So let's apply them. So 1 square to the left sorry one square to the right is minus one so we want to go positive so that's minus two that's what's happening to the x the x ones obviously is not affected by what's happening with the y the y i need to do my stretch followed by my translation so six times three is 18 plus the two 20. so again let's look at the b my horizontals affected first, so it's going to become 3. And then let's look at the stretch. 1 times 3 is 3, plus 2 is 5. Let's look at question 3. So sketching this graph. Uh, let's get some a ruler out. So we know it's going to, if I'm looking up here, it's going to have a minimum, it's a positive x, so it graphs, it's going to have a minimum, it's going to be a u-shaped, and the minimum is going to be at positive 2, minus 9. So if I think positive 2, minus 9, that's where my minimum is going to be. Now where it hits the y-axis... Now I'm looking at y when x is 0, so I would have 0 minus 2, so minus 2 squared is 4. 4 
4 minus 9 is minus 5. So I'm going to hit my axis at minus 5. So something like this will be suitable. So here is my 2 minus 9, my minimum point. Point on this axis here is minus 5. Now, I also need the points where it's crossing the x-axis. So, for, to do that is when g of x or that y value is 0. So, you think you'd have x minus 2 squared minus 9 equals 0. x minus 2 squared equals 9. x minus 2 equals plus or minus 3. So, x is 2 plus or minus 3. Okay, so 2 plus 3 is 5, so that's 5 there. 2 minus 3 is negative 1, and there are my points. Okay, so I've got my turning point, and I've got the points where it hits the x and y axes. So I've just shrunk this one down so we can still use it with part b. Um, so when I'm looking at part 1 here, 2g x minus 4, I need to... Write down the coordinates of the turning points, at uh, just one turning point, and when the curve is transformed, so that's uh, just the turning point. So if I look at the turning point, I'm going to move four to the right. Uh, and then outside, so outside of the G here is times by two. So the Y is going to be times by two, so negative 18 part two it's just two x inside so when it's inside it affects the horizontal and I do the opposite so instead of two times x I divide by two so it's going to be one minus nine as the y is unaffected and then finally if I look at three it's all in the modulus so that turning point then you know this part of the graph ends up up here so it's going to be 2, positive 9. And then finally, we want to do a sketch for g of x, where x is inside the modulus. So that means that I am just re-sketching what's happening on the right of my graph. So this part of the graph, the positive part, will stay the same. And then everything that happens on this side will be mirrored on the negative side because what's happening to a negative x is the same as what happened with the positive x. So it's going to end up looking like a w sign. Okay. Again, there's nothing perfect, just trying to get about right. So this is 2 minus 9, which means that this one must be minus 2 minus 9. Cross in here at 5, so we must cross here at negative 5, and here we hit at negative 5 as well. And there's all my y intercepts, my x intercepts, and my turning points. Okay, hope you've found the video useful. If you do, you know, and you're not subscribed, please hit a, a like and subscribe. If you're on a course with some others, some of your friends, and they are struggling with maths or they want some extra videos to watch, please just recommend my channel and stay tuned for the, the next video, which should be appearing tomorrow.